I gotta be quiet. I don't wanna wake a baby because Justin is remote for great night. Hey, everybody. Hello, beautiful people. It's time for a great night. Uh, it's me, Brian Brushwood. I'm here with Justin Robert Young, except we're not Do really. Uh, actually, you look fantastic. We, I, we were worried about the connection. But then all of a sudden, you Two, just three. look awesome. Na, 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 na. You don't remember that part when we do remotes? Uh, we do uh, the two, three, and then I come in and yell? Well, except for the way I remember it is that you would it's be totally... It's been a while. I, yeah. The way I remember it is you'd be totally ducked out on the audio, except for software magic has happened two, now. Two, three! Ba -na -na. See, that's the other thing is I did it even when the music wasn't there. Yeah. So th it's been a while since we've done a remote. It, but it, that's the things that we do. I want to bring back all the classic remote bits that we've done in the past. Uh, yeah, there was that one. And then there was the uh, 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 where you would constantly like tell me something was under the desk and I'd look and then you'd say boo and I'd, I'd cry. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. We'll save that one for the fall. <laughs> How far off are we from the fall? Because right now we're in the, end of the fall. month. The end of the month is the fall equinox. When okay. all the witches derive their power. <laughs> uh, the, uh, I, uh, it's supposed to, allegedly, there's rumors of cool breeze 60 degree next week, but I don't believe it. I, I think it's a I bunch think of we're, lies. I think we're into false fall, right? Is, is now false fall? Yeah. What was the Are total number fall? of Austin uh, seasons, like 12 or something? All right. Should we do that? Should we look it up right now? Yeah, I'll look the it 12 up. Austin, the 12 Austin seasons. You want to do that or should I do that? Uh, you, you look. You, you, you do it, and then, and then uh, I'll, I'll do my best to, to guess what's next. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, although we've had, we've had a great year weather-wise. I mean, like, I don't want to jinx it, but, but it seems like we're too far into the fall for, for summer to come clawing back at us too hard. Like we made it with a with I think fingers and toes we can count the number of hundred plus degree days this past summer. I know, which and is, it rained which is pretty good. It rained a shit ton over the summer, which was awesome. All right, twelve seasons <laughs> in Austin, in Texas. Central Texas. All right, we start off with winter, full spring, F full spring, full spring. Okay, second winter. Spring of Deception. Wait, so there's both a full spring. Like, you're just dumb as hell if you think this is spring. If you think that it's done being cold, you're a fucking moron, but, dude. But then, but then there's like... like I, got a, I got a bridge in Brooklyn I'd like to sell you. But then the Spring of Deception is more like, all right, you got me. That was pretty good. I thought it was spring. Yeah, but then there's Third Winter. Third winter has to be like the second week of, of March. Do, do they have dates for these or just when no. they... Okay, that, no, no, that has to be like right before South by Southwest, I'm guessing. Yeah. The pollening. Wait a minute. I thought the pollening was um, uh, like in January. That's when the cedar hits. Like I remember one time there was like, it looked like rolling fog and it was all pollen. Are you, are you going to file an amicus brief against no, no, no. this meme? I'm just I'm just wondering if they're if they're in uh, order. <laughs> would you like to Would you like me to log into the Wikipedia so I can make a note? Uh, yes, I demand it, sir. <laughs> Actual spring, okay. Summer, hell's front porch, okay. Yep that 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 tracks. That's that's uh, late June, false fall, second summer actual fall and that brings us back to winter. okay so we're probably gonna do false fall and we're gonna get second summer because it's been just only hot from end of june till like we uh, now so end it of was june august till... right yeah august was the only you know we we kept joking around when we when we found out when ash was pregnant that this was going to be a hot pregnant summer because we kept thinking that it was going to be like the last two years where it was just like a hundred degrees for a hundred days and and it, every day was the exact same. Started out at 81 when you walked out your front porch, like walked out in the morning, got up to 103, 104, 105, and then eventually tapered back down to 91, right? And then and that was pretty much every single day. But down damn near pleasant, man. There were times in I think it was like June or July that I was like on my walk and it was 80 degrees. Gorgeous. 
Yeah, uh, well, especially in the evening, like once the the, the demon day star went away, uh, it was it was really nice. Yeah. The uh, uh, have you have you been able to go on walks? I, I guess I guess we we did. Uh, for those of you guys who aren't patrons, shame on you. You missed the bones where we got a very uh, lovingly earnest uh, account of how the whole delivery went. Uh, yeah. For the baby, this is going to be impenetrable uh, cynicism. Before it was totally honest, and now I'm going to be impenetrably ironic. Just layers on layers. I love of it. my daughter. <laughs> uh, what, uh, do do we want to give a short summary? I mean, a baby happened. That's the short summary. Yeah, a baby oh, happened. No, no, no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Look, I'm a father now. All right, I'm go for father. it. Go for it. Uh, uh, give give us give us the recap previously on Great Night. Well, you can listen to the, the 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 back and forth of everything that happened in the hospital. But what I will give you guys now is the details on everything that has happened since, because literally we spoke for the bones after the first night we spent at home. We got out of the hospital on Wednesday, and now, uh, you know, we 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 did the bones that that next morning. Since then, you know, we're we're starting to get into the groove. A little bit, you know, um, a, a, a week old baby. Let me tell you some shit about a week old baby. This baby <laughs> They're weak and old. They <laughs> a are, weak man. old baby. I'll tell you what, every, every time I look at him, I'm like, do you even lift, dog? Come on. You also, even lift how did you just get head, born let alone, already Let old. alone these LBs. <laughs> I'm trying to throw up iron, dog. And you're, and you're not even, you're, you can barely even lift your head. <laughs> Silly, stupid baby, man. You don't know shit, do you? <laughs> All right. So, so, uh, weak old baby. Uh, let me tell you something about a weak old baby. This weak old baby lives to eat and shit and sleep. That's pretty much the only thing that she does. She wakes up, she wants food, she gets food, she goes, she shits and pisses, uh, and then goes right back to sleep. It's not a bad life. <laughs> she's yeah. like a really 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 depressed oh my goodness oh, no. oh my goodness no. of course oh. of course okay all right we we had a we had a hard stop there for a second but you're back you're back uh okay uh, yeah she eats and shits uh yeah uh yeah no she eats and shits that's her favorite thing to do man that's what she loves to do the most it's Is uh, uh, uh 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 boy man I don't know. It's 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 interesting because we are trying to get into some kind of a a flow, but what I've realized is that my life is really just a series of about an hour and a half windows. Yeah. I've got like 5 hour and a half windows for the entire day. Is and, and that and includes do, the 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 ones at night. And do do you reliably yet get to know when those are coming or just like it's catch as catch can. It's like, oh, it's my 90 minute window. It's mostly catch as catch can. Here's the one thing that's happened. So our baby was born not underweight, but barely. She was like on the uh, on 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 the edge of being dangerously underweight. She was five pounds, three ounces. Mm. So the number one thing that they were like, okay, this baby needs to eat. This baby needs to gain weight. So they were very, very specific and listen to the bones. There was like a whole thing about us feeding and getting the wrong stuff. There was a whole story there. I'm going to tell you this. This baby is gaining weight at a ridiculous pace. Oh, but really? To do that, to do that, it means that she pisses. I think we're at 17 times today. Like that's a lot of piss, Bri. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I, I bet there, uh, you know, I, I guess she's she's keeping all the nutrients, and you know, there, there's a lot of liquid in the formula, or... and the breast milk gets oh, good. it right out. Yeah. So that's the good news. But the, the real stringent stuff is okay. You got to feed her every two and a half hours, no matter what. Here's the problem: she keeps eating. So <laughs> if we wake her up and she eats for an hour and a half. And we have to feed her every two and a half hours. Does that really mean that we're feeding her every hour? That we, when we wake her up, we get her ready. She starts to feed. She feeds for an hour and a half. And then at the end of that, it's it, we just put her down for an hour, wake her right back up. 
So we talked to the doctor and they're like, well, that's mostly there. So she gets back to her birth weight. And I'm like, well, let me tell you about this little chonker. Yeah. This certified chode. <laughs> this cer- certified chode, yeah. This certified chode. She not only blew past her birth weight, she's a pound up on her birth weight as we talk right now, a week old. So I'm like, I think she's going to be okay. They're like, okay. Well, then she can sleep a little bit longer. You don't need to wake her up at once every uh, uh, two and a half hours, no matter what, from the beginning of the feeding. Brian, it's asinine. Like, uh, come on. You, you want you want to do it from the end of the feeding, but they're like, no, no, no. She needs more food. Wait, like, wait, they, they were like that. They like a goddamn uh, uh, Tivoli fountain. But, 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 I mean, that, that, that's the Old Testament. New Testament is you get to let her sleep, and that means you get to sleep, right? We can let her sleep up to four hours at night. Okay. And then we wake her up. So we still are in a period where there's two nighttime feedings. Mm-hmm. The Lately, it's tilted where she goes down in the like 11 midnight hour. And then that means there's really only one super gnarly like – two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning kind of feeding. Yeah. Like one of those, like, Jesus Christ. Like those, like, oh, God. Like those, like, I'm a hard-boiled detective and a, a bottle of whiskey fell on my eye. And I'm like, ah, like, like those kinds. Brian, I, I have never had a problem with waking up. Oh, dear. Until, until. until I had a baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but not in terms of like not waking up, waking up. I can I can go from unconscious to conscious. It just comes at a cost now. Uh, like there is what what does the devil do on that one? It's just like it's like I feel like I got hit by a truck, or I'll be in the middle of like a dream sleep. So last night, I thought we have a gravity blanket, and I was having a dream where it wasn't. Bella, it was another baby that I was in a hospital and they put the other baby in my arms and I fell asleep in my dream. Yep. But then I just kept thinking that the baby was in the gravity blanket. Gravity blanket is just a weighted blanket. Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of those. Yeah, they're like heavy blankets. Yeah. And so. No, I I I sleep under one of those. It's amazing. I kept digging through it and I'm like, where's the baby's arm? I think that's the baby's arm. And then eventually Ashley's like, are you looking for a baby in the gravity blanket? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> she's like, there's not a baby. It's, she's in the bassinet. And I'm like, well, that's relieving. <laughs> Man, that's always a trip when uh, when you, because uh, we've talked about my insomnia, but it's like, it's so weird when it's like, I'm trying so hard. I'm like, please, please go sleep. Please, please go sleep. And then I start dreaming. And in my dream, I'm dreaming about trying to go to sleep. And I spend all this time thinking I'm not going to sleep. And then I wake up and I'm like, wait, Bruce Willis wasn't in the room. That must that's- have been asleep. <laughs> That's my favorite high thought. My favorite high thought is your first dream every night is a dream of you trying to go to sleep. It is, man. Uh, so, um, uh, how many hours do you think you're rocking per day then, per 24 hour Fuck period? If I know. Oh, okay. I'm not even. I'm not even, dude. Like, come on. You know, like what? You like? You're gonna you're gonna roll into the unemployment office and ask people what their bank balance is. Like, that's just, I'm not I'm not the person to ask that question. Okay, well, ask well, a healthy well, person. Well, let me ask you this: How how many of your uh, engagements per day tend to be like appointment stuff, where you have to kind of negotiate uh, coverage of the baby to to go do like like this? I mean, obviously. We, we have a stern commitment that we never, ever break of starting at 7 p.m. sharp, central time. Central time. It's always been like that. It's always been like <laughs> that. Uh, so I would say we're starting to fold back my podcast schedule because on one hand, I was like, well, this is my first child. I need to bond with her. I need to spend a lot of time with her. This is very, uh, the moment she was born, I saw the rest of my life in front of me. It was a magic portal that opened between all possibility, the concept of sacrificing for the rest of my life so that this perfect little being could have the, the life of her dreams was something that very much called to me. So I need to spend time with her. And then I'm like, yeah, but with what fucking money, dude? Like you gotta, you gotta, I mean, like, come on, I'm not commuting to the, to the, to the factory, right? I'm not punching a clock here. I just need to go upstairs and talk into the can. We can figure that out. So uh, Ashley is the primary caregiver. Um, 
you know, the, the bad news is she is still on the hunt for a gig. The good news is that she's got time to take care of the baby. Um, and that's, that's it. You know, really my number one goal or not, not my number one job is I'm like the closer on the bottle. Go, go on. Do you have this situation where like, you know, so Ashley's breastfeeding, but you never really know. Breastfeeding is an inexact science. Like sometimes the baby latches a lot. Sometimes you have a lot of milk, but the, you know, it's in the way that you use it. It comes and it goes. So the, the word we got from the pediatrician is you put down the baby when she is ready to sleep. If she is asking for food, you just give her more food because that's the, that's the way that we're in right now. We're not, it's impossible to overfeed her. She'll just fall asleep when she's done eating. That's, that's the name of the game. So at a certain point, Ashley's tapped out on the titty and the, really the, wants the, to go to sleep. The keg is tapped. And so I get kicked to, to be the closer where I just got to feed the baby a bottle until she goes to sleep. Mm. That's my job. And I get all psyched up. I play Inner Sandman. And then I'm like, <laughs> like, oh, cracking my neck and shit. And, uh, you know, I, I, I throw a few bottles in the bullpen. And then, uh, and then I come charging out into the, uh, into the bedroom. I, I tenderly grab my infant daughter uh, by the butt, supporting her neck. And uh, I feed her a bottle that she goes to sleep. And then I, then I furiously pump my fist and <laughs> give, a, uh, give a, a, a tawdry interview to Sports Illustrated about people on the New York City subway. Uh, is, is that a thing that happened? Uh, John Rocker did that, yeah. So shout out to all the people who remember John Rocker that I just referenced. Uh, no, I, I, I don't know anything about that. No, that's fine. It was mostly for the one person that remembers John Rocker. Okay, kind of like the... Although the... John Rocker was the inspiration for Kenny Powers. Oh, really? That's like the, yeah, the idea of Kenny Powers, the eastbound and down, yeah. is essentially a takeoff of the John Rocker saga where a very you know, a uh, uh, Southern out there, a uh, uh, relief pitcher then falls from grace. Uh, we did, uh, uh, speaking of like a bit for one person, we found, we found the one person who, who dug the mind Laban bit. Um, it was, it was, it was a friend of mine from high school who I well, played. Explain with. it. Explain it. <laughs> well, for the people. I mean, it's actually, if you know, you know, but, uh, uh, uh no you, we have to we're doing a show <laughs> it's fine well, no i mean it, it's it, also it, promoting it, our podcast uh okay it, yeah uh, we we put a bit into it uh, you know the process for world's greatest con oftentimes involves yours truly kind of going off on unhinged uh directions at knowing that occasionally there'll be gold there but a lot of it's going to be garbage but the one bit that i was really surprised made the cut was i was doing all the sound effects of all the germans getting wiped in their so U-boat. this is the new episode of world's greatest con it is called q ships you should download it right now but it is a very violent story unlike a lot of our other stories where there's you know if, if there's death it's almost incidental but this one is a lot of death. It is it, it is uh, two nations during World War One tricking each other and shooting and killing each other constantly, and uh, to blunt some of the violence because there's a lot of it in the episode. Uh, we made a decision collectively that maybe we'd lighten it up a little bit. <laughs> we do we do one silly massacre. <laughs> yeah. Well, and so, so, uh, so I go off on this, you know, sound effect. It's if you remember Pee Wee's Big Adventure, I channeled playing with battleships in a little swimming pool, and uh, and one of the sound, the the things I tossed out there was the Germans getting killed and shouting "My Leben," uh, and I was surprised that it got left, and I was like, uh, I'm surprised you left that in there, and you're like, uh, somewhere out there is one Gen Xer who remembers Wolfenstein 3D, oh, who's yeah. gonna love it, and sure enough. Uh, like uh, my my best friend from high school just texted me out of nowhere saying, "Mine Laban." <laughs> uh, so I'm I'm glad no, that that made one person very happy. We were we were looking up Mine Laban to see where whether <laughs> or not it meant something. It. <laughs> if you could find it, the number one result of Mine Laban is 
a Reddit post on r slash ask here we go so so this is the results we got oh man it was so great because because uh uh i i wanted to make sure that that mein leben was even the right phrase but then uh but the very first thing it said would a german person ever actually shout mein leben and i clicked on it <laughs> and it says uh does that even make sense grammatically no wait hold on hold on just no because it's it's you have to read the full reddit post because it's poetry yeah this is it it says would a german yeah. that's that's what i was doing uh would a german person a ever actually shout mein leben when stabbed does that even when make sense? stabbed when stabbed is very important <laughs> okay yes does that even make sense gram grammatically uh and the guy says uh no why would anyone in any language do that <laughs> uh <laughs> <laughs> and then meanwhile other people were taking it seriously like i don't know it's a theatrical language in my opinion wouldn't be surprised if like in something from the 1700s the <laughs> somebody says my <laughs> <laughs> and then look, look they actually wrote a little play <laughs> with 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 the child moon in frimling is border through Moon, bit in high. I can't. Uh, whatever. Uh, and then yeah. it's like stab. My Laban. My Laban. Yeah, I could see that, but nobody I've stabbed in real life has ever said that. <laughs> oh my God! Just the idea. I I have found myself laughing randomly at just the idea of asking a bunch of Germans for whom humor is its own translatable thing to the german people but just asking a bunch of stone-faced germans <laughs> would any of you scream <laughs> mein leben when you get stabbed it's specifically stabbed is pretty great <laughs> stabbed is amazing it's not shot it's just stabbed. you're just walking down the street you, ah <laughs> my Laban. Well, now I want to hear it. Just in case, if, 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 if we're, I mean, if we're going to explain it, we better explain it. I'm just going to go do my Laban on uh, the YouTubes. Uh, Let's see if we can get this. This is old school. This is uh, uh, Wolfenstein, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't see. Oh, here we go. Yeah, here we go. Yes, there we go. <laughs> Hold on, let me let me crank this up. I uh, put it on here. I'm gonna hit refresh. My Laban. <laughs> my Laban. I do, we need this on the soundboard, okay? Nick? We need to get my Laban my on the Laban. soundboard for sure. <laughs> anytime, anytime, just you come in with a with a with a sniper attack zinger. It's just my Laban. <laughs> oh. Oh, fucking God. Uh, good yeah, episode, no, so, Dan. Good so feedback was, on the episode. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so that was, in, that was in the episode. Although we wanted to do... There's another part where a bunch of uh, English people are dying, and Brian initially also screamed, "My life, <laughs> my life, uh, <laughs> my life!" Didn't, I, don't, I don't think it really. It didn't. It didn't wind up meriting a bookend it was it was fine as it was yeah uh, uh, it didn't it didn't make the the english side any better to have one of them say randomly my my life and then because like somebody would in english what are they gonna think did that did that british person just get stabbed <laughs> <laughs> My life, Governor. <laughs> my life. Hello, hello. What's all this? My life. Uh, so yeah, no new episode. Of World's greatest con out. Got it out from the delivery room. Yeah, yeah. We did talk about that a bit during the bones too. Very excited. I, I, I held. I held. I kept the promise, Brian. You did. The episode would be out before my daughter was and my daughter tried to fuck it up too man yeah she 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 tried to sneak attack like like Santa, a, Santa like a, like a certain early. type of british ship i know i know there's apparently another uh cool thing that somebody emailed in and um you know as soon as i i fit it into an hour and a half window i want to actually do i want i want to get on my george lucas and you know, make the special edition of the Q ships episode. Oh, that'd be great. You know, we just keep we just keep finding new different things. And it's we, just you know, we can just make it better. It's gonna be so good, Justin. Every second of uh, 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 so dense. Yeah, you know, we we just wanted to make sure that 
in in the special edition brian when he screams mein leben it's it's gonna it's gonna be there's also gonna be another brian behind him who's giving a thumbs up <laughs> we, we, and we're gonna we're gonna append five random scenes that add nothing to the story exactly well, I'm, I'm going to actually take the deleted scene of Brian screaming my life, and I'm just going to loop it for the first five minutes because that's <laughs> what I originally wanted to do. It's just, it's just a mean old, mean old corporate America wouldn't let me do it. <laughs> hey, man. Oh, uh, how are you doing, dude? Oh, good. Really good. Really productive. It's good It's good to, to uh, be kicking ass and taking names in the office. I've been getting up at like 530 every day, started running again. Uh, oh, nice! Yeah, I think I think I've lost like five pounds over the last two and a half weeks. It's been it's been good, and nice. uh, the uh, uh, I'm 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 ready to get back to fighting weight. Uh, and uh, uh, you know what? I've been fighting working, weight. Fighting weight. Uh, You're gonna fight weight. Uh, I'm I'm gonna fight waiting. I'm gonna fight waiting for things. Good. Yeah. No more waiting. If you get up to a a a, a mater d at a fancy restaurant, he says. Uh, 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 so we're getting your table ready. Kick him right in the face. Fight okay. him. <laughs> Fight him. Uh, you know what? Before uh, I, I, I'm rounding the corner on this Kickstarter project, and I think I'm at the point that I'm ready to start sharing previews Have of the you Kickstarter. Talked about it at all? No, nope, I haven't. I haven't said boo about it until I had something to share with the preview. The preview is now like it's 95 percent done. It uh, there's only a couple of placeholders like. You know, famous person quote goes here, and I just need to find a quote from a famous person about the project. But uh, if anybody wants to see the preview and get a response, just hit me up at brian at com, and I'll send it to you. It, like at this point, uh, the most helpful thing, weirdly, is to have people who know nothing about the project, who have no idea how to sell it or whatever. I, I just open ended question. I'm just like, take a look at this. Because uh, I'm barely in it. I'm I'm only mentioned once. It's all it's all about Cali. And uh, uh, Cal this is Callie and Bonnie's project. I'm only here to add that sizzle to the steak of the Kickstarter. Uh, and uh, it, it some super helpful things like, oh, I can't, I can't really see the. I guess I'll just tell you it's fucking Callie cards. Should, should I just play the video uh, and people know that it'll come out some probably early next week? I mean, you're the you're you're the marketer, man. Okay, all right. Well, here. Uh, so so here's here's the the story is uh let me figure out where the link is i probably should have thought about this so uh at the age of nine uh callie was commenting on either bonnie's gray hair or she had gotten out of the shower or something and bonnie uh started wiggling her fingers and says you too will get old one day and so she turned around and made a a card at the age of nine uh, that said that with a picture of an old wrinkly woman and uh, uh, and so since then, uh, she kept on going, and now we have dozens of these Callie's cards, and they're all super dark existential crisis uh, adult thoughts, and uh, but but fused with the sunny disposition of her and the childish drawings. There's something that just really tickles me about it. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, and so. I originally was going to get these printed up and just put them on the online store, but then it occurred to me that, uh, wait, then I'd have to guess how many and how popular and all that stuff. Uh, but then if we just did a Kickstarter, we would have the exact right number. And so uh, here is, I think for the first time on this show, here is the, um, uh, the what do you call it, the... Uh, the, the video part of it. Kickstarter video? Yeah, that's that's the other thing is I one of the things that we figured out was like nobody, like people really don't want to read jack shit at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and and if, if like even though the first line down says exactly what this is for, uh, nobody could be bothered. So anyway, here's here's the Callie's card Kickstarter video. Hello, I'm Callie Brushwood, and you adults ask some strange things. Why am I special? Why am I alone? What if there's an all-powerful being in charge of everything? <laughs> so I've decided to make some greeting cards based off of the things I hear you say. Yes, you. You specifically. Introducing Callie's cards. An existential crisis extravaganza. Your words, my art. Birth 
birthdays, anniversaries, quinceañeras, silver anniversaries, golden birthdays, golden quinceañeras, a 75th birthday, bat mitzvah. Callie's cards are available right now at Callie'sCards.com. 100% of the proceeds from Callie's cards will go into funding the education of me and my two sisters. Because somebody's got to pay for this. If it doesn't say Callie's cards, set it on fire. Whenever you laugh, it makes me think that I'm saying something bad because you laugh at bad things. You did laugh at that guy with him when he bit his finger off. <laughs> <laughs> Kickstarter has one simple goal, to turn my drawings into actual high-quality greeting cards that'll make your friends smile. I've been drawing Callie's cards since I was nine years old, and we've got dozens of them. Basically, we want to turn these drawings into cards like these. If you like the idea of me hustling now so that you can make your friends smile, consider supporting this Kickstarter. And by consider, I mean kick. We've got tons of rewards for you. Everything from a single card of your choice to a digital file of all the cards, physical copies of all the cards, even commission new cards where you get to keep the original art. So what do you say? Let's make Callie's cards a line of real greeting cards. Because if America's gonna have an existential crisis, I want in. <laughs> so the uh, uh, that's amazing. <laughs> uh, the second half is 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 kind of the, the the boring stilted, you know, explaining what a Kickstarter is and all that. But apparently it was necessary because uh, the the most common response that we got was, "This is great, I love it." What what is it again? Do we just suggest something and she draws us a picture? And it's like, no, no, it's in that you're not reading it, are you? Okay. And so uh, uh, anyway, if if people want to look at the 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 copy on there, uh, just just email me and I'll share it. But but. The idea is, I think Monday of next week, we want to we want to launch with a big old thunderclap. Uh, I set the the goal attainable for one day to blow past, and you know how how Kickstarter be like, where it's like if you blow past yeah. that goal, then all of a sudden you have a reason to send out press releases to the local news. And I know Callie would be hilarious on the local news, and then those clips can be sent to national news and all that stuff. So we'll see. But uh, but 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 if if anybody wants, uh, just plan on beginning of next week. Hopefully, we blow right past that goal. Uh, uh, yeah, dude, I think it's uh, I think it's awesome. I think it's I think it's gonna do great. And and Callie is hilarious in those videos. Uh, she is good. Like uh, somebody asked, like how who did this video? How did you make it so good? I was like, not gonna lie, that video took twenty minutes and uh, was you know. Uh, it just chopped down <laughs> like that was it yeah she's just that good no she is really really funny <laughs> chat chat saying dear lord brian really did make a bunch, a bunch of little brides didn't you that's what that's i can't wait to see <laughs> with your daughter is how much of of <laughs> how much of justin comes out well so far she pees a lot i do that too so, <laughs> that's one know. one in the we're, bank we're, we're we're right there man yeah yeah i don't know yeah all right, so there we go. So, so Kickstarter, everybody, go ahead and pay attention to that, or, or, uh, or I guess follow the mailing list, right? That's, yeah, that's really what you want to do. Yeah, if you just go to gimme.scamstuff.com, just sign up for a giveaway, and we'll add you to the email list. Uh, and also remember to go to patreon.com/slash great night. That's where you can support the show. It's where you get the bonus episode, the bones, as we call it. And uh, if you didn't get Thursdays, man, you you better, you, you should. It, it is the real straight dope of the entire labor process the entire hospital process if you ever wanted to know my uh, uh thoughts on being in the postpartum wing of a a maternity ward then boy do i give it to you in spades uh, i was about to say like like uh like you i could tell that you were fully re-engaged with the moment as you were given the storytelling <laughs> like like oh he's still there on that battlefield <laughs> It was, yeah, I mean, listen to it. I don't want to go and do the rant again, but uh, uh, there was, there was, uh, there were some, I had notes, by and large, a 10 out of 10 experience, few notes, few notes. <laughs> uh, well, uh, it's also intensely humiliating when you don't know how to be a parent and then you get a baby and then they're like, hey, be a parent. And you're like, cool. And then they're like, like, did you do the parent thing? It's like, did you tell us to do it? And they're like, no. It's like, well, then how the fuck were we supposed to know? <laughs> what are we, idiots? Are we big fat morons here? Come on. Uh, are you wearing moron hats? 
Well, uh, speaking of idiots and morons, we're about to look like one uh, or two because Nathan has another game. Isn't that right, Nathan? Hello, hello, and yes, I do. Uh, tonight's game is called Ride or Dying. It will be presented with terms of various vehicles or foods. I'm not really sure which. Uh, your mm. job is to guess which is which. One point will be awarded for a correct guess. Another, if you can guess in description what this is. Cool? Cool. But first, wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Who goes? Are we alternating here? Or? Uh, you'll both go collectively. Whoever gets it right gets the point. Simple as that. Okay, cool. But first, just another pilot has a gift for us. Jart! Jart! Oh my gosh. More Jart? Jart. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, Bonnie, Bonnie didn't know that we were collecting Jart. <laughs> so she was just like. <laughs> What's this little neck of Jar Jar? And I'm like, that's Michelangelo's David. It's Jart. It's, it might, she goes, what's yeah. Jart? I'm like, it's Jar Jar Pink side. We only have the largest museum of Jart. We in are the growing planet. our collection. <laughs> our collection of Jart. Okay. This one looks as though it was, um, it looks as though it came in a Happy Meal or something. Uh, warning, choking hazard, small parts. And it is in pieces. And it looks like there's a stand. Uh, it's very small. It's about the size of my thumb. Uh, there's there's a little itty bitty Jar Jar head right here. Uh, and then the I'll what? see if I can assemble. Oh, it's a Lego. It's a Lego Jar Jar. Oh! Okay, here we go. I'm assembling. <laughs> I'm assembling his head. Uh, uh, there we go. Me so Swedish now. Here we go. And I'm putting on the arms. Wait. Oh, he has articulated arms. Okay. All right. And I'm putting him on the stand. And he goes into the Jart collection. And we, our debt rises to just another pilot. I put this on the wrong side. He has reverse arms. No, <laughs> he's doing this. All right, I'll, I'll fix this later. All right. Yeah, well, 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 well Brian futzes with that, uh, let's go ahead and get question number one. All right, question number one is Carmine. Known for its vibrancy, Carmine can be found across the world and for a time was highly sought in value. Uh, Spain had a monopoly on this till about 1820 until new means of manufacturing were found. Is this food or is this vehicle? Really? Okay, hold on. You used a proper noun. You said Carmine, which um, is, is – are there any lies in anything that you're telling us? No lies, just I'm not telling you everything. Okay, but 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 its proper noun is uh, carmine. Carmine. Uh, All right, carmine. We're we're determining whether or not it's a food vehicle or, a vehicle. or food. Correct. Wait, and and it was from when? Um, do, 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 do. Spain had a monopoly on this till about 1820. Okay, so what vehicles were going around town? Before 1820. Vehicle slash means of transportation, as there are a few confusing ones here. Okay. <laughs> um, hmm. He just said the game's called Ride or Dine. It's not like combustible car That's true. or dine. It's not called Ruin the Planet or Dine. Yeah, it's not called You're Choking Mother Earth with your SUV, you pig, or dine. There we go. We got we got a fully assembled piece of jart. Thank you very much, Just Another Pilot. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's amazing. Okay. Lifelines are available if you like. No, yeah, you, you what, don't what's use... What's our lifeline? Okay, all right. Yeah, we'll take a lifeline. What is it? Uh, all right. <laughs> lifeline, no one gets this point. Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait hold wait. on, that's the opposite of a lifeline. The whole sorry. point of a lifeline is so you can get a point and sorry. get some yeah, help. Fine, fine, what fine, the, fine. That's, if I wanted to not get a point, I'd say, I give up. That's fine. Yeah, it's your the life reverse not of a lifeline. Pardon. Don't think I'm giving up. I'm not fucking giving up. You think I'm going to humiliate myself in front of my sleeping daughter? That's ridiculous. <laughs> All right, your uh, lifeline okay. is red. The word red. Hmm. Maybe yeah, a, I think it's a food. I th you know what? I think it's a fire engine. Uh, I think I think it is a fire brigade. Um, uh, some kind of horse drawn fire, fire brigade in, in 1820. Yeah. What yeah, are yeah. The, what's the fire brigade? What is it? A bunch of rolling balls? No, no. They get they 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 got like a bunch of horses towing like a horse drawn carriage or something with water in it. As a matter of fact, that's why I think it was before this time. The reason that they're still sometimes called fire plugs is because. 
London installed a whole bunch of um, they, they would literally have water under pressure and they would tap it with with a with a plug. You know, they would hammer it down. And then when they had a fire, they would they would yank it out and water would come out. And that's what they, they used. But absent that, you needed to have horse drawn conveyances. Mm. So that's mm. uh, that's that's what I'm my guess is all of us is yeah. going to turn out to be wrong. Save that save that revisionist history for Tucker Carlson, Brian. <laughs> I right. think carmine is asparagus in Spanish. <laughs> Go. All right. <laughs> carmine is in fact a food. It is the deep red dye found from grounding up bugs, thus giving Justin one point. Fuck yeah, uh, uh, bugs, asparagus of the insect world. So, sorry. Uh, so red was a clue. How? color it is meant for red food dye okay car carmine is carmine mm -hmm. is what ground up bugs make to get make red food dye a oh, red, red food dye and that's why it's food brian okay all right how are you not seeing this it's a food right. dye. That's, that's, that's 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 one point for justin okay all right uh, i'll tell you what and why, don't, why I think it should just be all the points. I was that right. <laughs> I mean, so far, you have infinitely more points so than far, me. So far, I have all the points. Number one point, man, me. Meanwhile, I have no point. Next up Zero is a points. song Zero points, bereft of points, a ghostly plane <laughs> whistling through Hollow, the trees soulless. of points. I walk through these wastelands. Mm-hmm. Brian, red, cold, shivering, red, I naked. Say. Fire hey, you want to know what I watched? Chaos. Do you ever, have you seen Chaos? No. What, what, is it spelled just C-H-A-O-S? No, K-A-O-S. It's basically like an updated take as if the Greek gods oh, were uh, uh, as a matter of, that made the Wall Street Goldblum as Zeus. Uh, that made the uh, Wall Street Journal's list of best of August. And uh, uh, I, I was going to check that one out next. I ended up watching Chimp Crazy. You see, you see the chimp crazy? No. Uh, from... Do you want to talk about that, or do you want me to get my two lines off about chaos? Oh, first? no, no, no. I, I want to hear all about chaos. No, it sucks. That's it. Oh, shit. I was hoping it was yeah. good. No, I so did I. <laughs> Turns out it sucks. Uh, chimp, chimp crazy. What about chimp crazy? It's very good. It's from the guy who did Tiger King, but nobody wants to give him access anymore, so he hired a graduate of clown college to be his proxy director, <laughs> to pretend to be the director. Uh, it's very good. Just watch the first two episodes. I think you'll be hooked. It's, they're releasing it week over week. Oh, nice. Good. Uh, okay, all right. Next, Question. Next up is a th uh, song thew. Popularized in 1950s Thailand, song thews are less so a specific thing, but rather a type of process. Song thews come in a few different styles, but generally are adaptive to any occasion. What, uh, how do you spell that? S-O-N-G-T-H-E-A-W. Song theme. Wh when is it from? 1950s Thailand. Mm. And where's Thailand? <laughs> Point to it on a map. That way. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the... Hmm. Hmm. Uh... Read, read the quest. Read it again. Hey, Pop Brian. If th if this was very Thai, do you think they'd call it Muay Thai? <laughs> Good lord. Popularized in the 1950s in Thailand, song thieves are less so a specific thing, but rather a type of process. Song thieves come in a few different styles, but generally are adaptive to any occasion. Process. That that screams. Mm. Please think I'm food. Which I'm going to say it's a car. It's it's a it's it's a type of conversion for a motorcycle to make into a a, a car like thing. That's how tuk tuks are made. Tuk tuks are oh. made by song fee, song few or whatever. Oh, that's a good one. Where it's just like it's four pieces of wood and a couple and like a hammer and, and nails and, and, and it's extra like, oh, one let me, extra. Let me song fee this. Yeah, this yeah. hog. That's <laughs> I, I, I feel good about that guess. Okay, Justin. It, you think they call them hogs in Thailand? Uh, 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 Motorcycles. No, <laughs> I don't think hey, so. Hey, baby, get on my hog. It's me, Ty Jim. Now, now, what's weird is you do hear an awful lot of get on my hog in Bangkok, yeah. Thailand, but in it has Bangkok. nothing to do with motor vehicles. They call me the Bangkok hog master. <laughs> I drive motorcycles. <laughs> Apparently, uh, Harley Davidsons are considered luxuries in uh, the uh, the Eastern world. Harley-Davidson really considered luxuries. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, they're like they're like like more on the lines of like an, a very expensive sports car or something like that. Are, are they are they not that way here in the U.S.? I thought they were a luxury here as well. Like I mean, but like they're, they have a, 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 a blue collar aesthetic to them. You know, it's like oh, if you own the plant where lumber's made, then you buy a Harley Davidson. Oh, <laughs> if you I, live I, a good life on the Union track, then uh, when you when you get to be Thetan level five. I don't. I don't. I'm not in the union. Then you get to buy a Harley Davidson. That's that's wild. Like I've never not thought it was a luxury brand because all I knew is that it was like anybody who rode a motorcycle would mumble about like saving up and someday getting a Harley, and they all get excited when they get one. Well, yeah, I guess I, I'm not saying that it's not expensive, but it's like I, I, I'm, I, the line would be more like okay, a Bugatti is is. At, at a different level than a Harley Davidson, if even just because different kind of people want to buy different things. Does that make sense? Yeah, Bugatti is one of those, like, crotch rocket fast ones, or? No, that's just a car. It's a, oh. an expensive Italian car. See, there's a, apparently cars and food, two things I'm not uh, terribly good at. However, Brian, except I for have the fact terrible news about this game. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I'm, I'm going to sit here and enjoy my, my Humpty Dumpty shaped score as long as I have it. Uh, do, do you have a guess, Justin? Song the song the song the I've seen a few different pronunciations of it. I mean, song the is asparagus in Thai. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Thai for asparagus. That's a food, man. <laughs> no, you can't fucking fool me, dude. Do it. And, Justin and... with a food and Brian with a vehicle. Uh, Brian, yeah. in fact, you get two points as you gave me a description that is actually fairly accurate. It is a conversion process in which you take a truck or a motorcycle and add a bench. Yeah, I'll take it, dude. That's awesome. Those, Julia, those time, Julia! those time motherfuckers love to sit, dude. <laughs> A lot of people won't say it. You can't say it, you get canceled. But Thai people love sitting. <laughs> Holy shit, man! You, right. you meet him. You meet a Thai motherfucker. He's gonna sit right down. He's gonna sit like he, they don't stand at all. Nobody stands in Thailand. That's rhyme, so you know it's true. <laughs> All right, next up is a Cole Rabbi, uh, primarily European. Uh, hey, you want to know what the favorite Stephen King book is in Thailand? What? Uh, well, uh, hold on. Uh, the Stand. <laughs> <laughs> nope. They, they hate that one. They sit down all the time. What, what, what is their favorite? The Langoliers. <laughs> Because they all identify with a guy who was drunk and asleep the whole shit book. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's not really a lot of rhyme or reason. They just really hate the stand. <laughs> all right, go go ahead, Nathan. I thought I'd be so... Cole Rabbi, primarily European, Poland specifically. Um, Cole Rabbi can be found all over the place and is known by all ages. It is unique as it's often viewed as a hybrid. It is very popular in East Asia. It has earned Poland in the millions for this year's export. This year's export from Poland of what's it called again? Kol Rabbi or Kol Rabbi. Yeah, yeah, uh, 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 you know what? Feel free to just spell all of these for us. K O H L R A B I. Kol Rabbi. And... Oh, so it doesn't have the double B because that would be Rabbi, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, this is more Rabi. Rabi. Kol, Kol Rabi? Rabies. Kol Rabi. So, uh, one, one more time on the factoid before the Poland stuff. A primary European export, uh, kohlrabi mm. can be found all over the place and is known by all ages. It is unique as it is often viewed as a hybrid. It is very popular in East Asia and has earned Poland at least 10 million in this year's exports. Oh, and this is a vehicle. It's actually, I know this one. So it's a vehicle. It's actually a submersible, but it's the screen door. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it's literally a hybrid, and this one is hiding in plain daylight. It is one of those Eastern European hack jobs that nobody wants uh, uh, from any, any, anybody in the Warsaw Pact. Nobody wants your cars. That's what I think it is. All right, gentlemen, neither. It is actually a food. It is a hybrid of turnip and cabbage thrown together. Fuck. Uh, and yeah. It is a whole thing. It is primarily export uh, from Poland, and it is pretty popular in East Asian cuisine. Ten million dollars seems like a, a small. Uh, At least, 
I don't remember the full fact. <laughs> the real amount is ten billion. No, I it, at least it was 10 million. double. T- it was double million, I believe. But yes, double millions, dude. Double okay. millions. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, they would have gotten more from Thailand, but they wouldn't stand up to get their wallet out. So they just had to do it on credit. <laughs> they just they just kind of just wave their their iPhones. They say. love sitting, dude. <laughs> but fucking the Thai love sitting. They're making benches in cars, in what? cars. What they already have seats, Brian. How much do you have to fucking love sitting to put another bench on a car? Uh, Annalisa in the chat is saying that Ashley grew kohlrabi last year. Oh fucking who cares about her? Enough. I'm a new mother. Stop being special. This is my show. All right. What's 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 the score, Nathan? Currently, we are at one Justin, two Brian, and now that we are at the halfway mark, I can introduce tonight's prize. Uh oh. Oh. Uh oh. Found in the beautiful halls of Half Price Books, an honest to God Obama action figure made during the 2008 election. Oh, and it looks exactly Damn. like Obama. My goodness, the resemblance is John Cena. Uh, <laughs> uh yeah, I oh, found this Obama. at Half Price Books. So uh, the, oh, hold, hold on, hold that up so the camera can see it. Uh, that that is not Barack Obama at all. That is that is no. that is John Cena playing Barack Obama. That was definitely another figure that they just put new hair on. <laughs> All right. I would agree. Well, now, Brian, <laughs> you know, what, what you have to remember is the uh, uh, Thai people, they uh, don't like uh, standing. <laughs> don't, Not at all. They, they don't. They, they don't. They like, uh, uh, you, ever, you, ever, you ever heard of this? You ever heard of this, Brian? They, they. <laughs> all right, Nathan, hit us. All right. Deli boy. This item has never garnered a mass popularity, but is remarkable for its fusion approach. Invented in Japan, the Deli Boy made a splash for those living in urban environments as being very cost-effective and unique. Although no longer popular, it remains an icon for its presentation. Man, again, I don't know how much you're trying to mess with our minds. Yeah, Clearly, dude, don't mess with our minds. It uh, look there. There are some dumb vehicles that get made. Like, uh, do you remember? Dumb as shit. Do you remember Le Run? Did you ever see La Run? Yeah, did you ever see it? No, no, no. Did you ever see what? Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't know what you're, you're talking, talking about. Or are you talking to him? I'm talking to anyone on the panel who knows what I'm a Le Run is. I'm backing you up. I like backing you up. Hey, did you ever see it? Fucko? Jesus Christ. Answer what the him. fuck is that? Yeah, that's the La Run. I had one, and mine was blue like this one. It's a skate bike. Take yourself <laughs> a roller skate, stick it on the front wheel, uh, uh, take uh, so two wheels there. Take a big old, uh, a little tiny baby wheel, stick it on the back, uh, put a seat on it, and have no handles and just just pedal. It's the dumbest shit ever. That's I. That's what I think this is. Is something like a Le Run. Okay, you're answering means of transportation, Justin. I think that it's a. Uh, 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 you said it was from Japan. Yes. I think it was a car that is light, lighter than normal American cars, and so therefore they drift. But they went out of fashion when Lil Bow Wow stopped drifting cars fast and furiously in, in Tokyo. Okay, okay. The Deli Boy is a Fast and the Furious car with a Vin Diesel cameo at the end, which really reignited the Fast and the Furious franchise because it was a dead franchise until he came back and it became a global phenomenon. God bless seeing this. Originating with a Paul Walker thriller, Fast and the Furious was a auto racing franchise that eventually ballooned into a blockbuster cinema spectacle, a multiracial delight uh, for pulse pounding cinema fans to learn the purpose of family. Nice. All right. Deli boy car. Lock it in. Deli Boy car, Deli Boy yeah. motor transportation. Gentlemen, you're both correct. The Deli Boy is the Toyota quick delivery vehicle looking like the square panel van you find in New York. Um, yeah, look it up. I promise you it's a thing. We have one in town. Okay. Um, these vehicles uh, were made in 19, I believe, 85 uh, up to 2016. 
Uh, no, put Toyota Deli Boy. Look, hey man, next time you tell me to look it up, don't act like I fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> look up yeah. Toyota Deli, or on the right over there. Up a little bit. Oh, this is great audio. <laughs> Toyota, Toyota Deli Boy. It's a fucking van. Okay, it got is a it. fucking van. It's a van. Yep. Oh, it's a fucking van. It hey, is a fucking Brian. Van. It's a fucking van. It sure is. It sure is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Man, people do fucked up shit in vans, man. Uh, they do fucked up shit. What in vans. what type of vehicle did you did you say it was? Oh, it was a van, dude. It was a van. No, did you say it was Justin? Oh, I said it was a very very light car that one would race fast and the furiously, but they would <laughs> drift in Tokyo. Got it. That's yeah. what I said. Okay, it was, yeah. Which I think I should be awarded full points wait, because wait, there wait. was a scene. In Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift, where the white guy, not Bow Wow, uh, uh, was racing a deli boy. And if if you haven't seen the movie, then you can't call me a liar. <laughs> Chat, can Fair you call enough. him a liar? Fair enough. Nope. <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. I saw that movie in theaters. I was very excited when <laughs> Vin Diesel Might have been a different cut. End. Might have been a different cut. Uh, okay, I'll I saw award all, it. It's I closer saw, than I Brian's. saw the original three in theaters. The first one was really good. The second one was intensely homoerotic. And the third one was in Japan. The cars are lighter here. They said they drift. Uh, Chad is unfortunately calling you a liar, so thus I will not award your extra point. They fucking point. all lied to themselves is the problem with them, <laughs> you know? This is trauma. They need to visit a hypnotist to recover their memories. All he'll, right. He'll get them right. Wait, what's the score, Nathan? The score is currently two Justin, three Brian. All right. Next up. Castorium. Although non-specific in nationality, you'll often find Castorium in areas with high wealth or industry. It is known for its iconic yellow color. Castorium? That's got to be like a derivative of castor oil. I, I think it's a derivative of castor oil, which is yellow. Uh, also, I will, I will hunt down and punch in the nuts anybody who successfully called a car Castorium. <laughs> All right, we've got to lock in for food. Although I may, any... I may rename my Jeep Castorium. <laughs> you should <laughs> do it. One. I've never, I've never given the, my Jeep a name. My Jeep might C have to be called Castorium. C A S T O R, <laughs> and then just do I U M. Like just yeah, and you should have Castorium tattooed on your fucking knuckles. Love, love it. <laughs> All right, Justin, what is your lock in? So what, Brian said food? I said I said food, specifically something what, similar to... What nation to... is this from? It does not necessarily have a particular nationality. It's everywhere. Try hard. This is a try hard thing. Like, they... You can't be, what are you, international? Wait, You're an intercontinental fucking concept? I, I looked, I really tried to pin a nationality here, and I couldn't but necessarily who's really pin. into it? Who's really Mexicans, into it? Mexicans. You know what? Just, just the, you, you don't need you don't need to say the nationality. Just you know, adopt the their Inuits? accent and uh, uh, do a cartoonish overproduction of their accent. And don't. And if you don't know the accent, then just start doing accents. And then do and then act like you're another accent that they don't like, and then explain why you don't like the other accent. <laughs> okay. I just realized Nathan is not Chat GPT. He's not Grok. No, He's not don't gonna do that. Hey, don't we ain't gonna do, do this, this whole war thing. We're not gonna really do that. We do hold a lot of gold and got a coin for it, but we won't tell you who you are, or what you do with your money. But that's kind of what we do here. Yeah. Wait, that's your... what the fuck uh, accent I... is that? Uh, you know what? Actually, uh, uh, everybody. Uh, 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 email us your guesses. <laughs> <laughs> Nate GPT. That was like that was like if uh, uh, if, if in what's the his butt said, character from no Gangs Nate. of New York was also Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> <laughs> That was Bo Bomba's neighbor. <laughs> it was, yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. So, so my guess was <laughs> your guess is food. Yeah, a derivative of castor oil. And Justin, I think it's Brian's Jeep. <laughs> Brian's Jeep. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, castrium is actually beaver anal glands. It is used as a food additive, perfume, and flavoring for cigars mm. or, or sorry, cigarettes and booze, giving Brian a leg up of two. Wow. So, so what's the score now? Uh, Brian five, Justin two. 
Uh, man, it's a good thing this is the 10 point round. 10 point round. All right. Ooh, what do I want to do for is it castorium or castrium? Because or uh, cast uh C A S T O R E U M. Yeah. Castorium. Because I'm reading Castorium, but it, I could totally be the wrong. The 2025 Ford Castorium <laughs> is a, an old Thai pickup truck with four benches. <laughs> Just another pilot nailed it. He says it's butt stuff. It's it is butt it stuff. Is. stuff from a butt. <laughs> I mean, like that. That's like, like there's like the old joke of like, oh, like. Who who thought of milk? Who looked at a cow and said, I want to suck that udder or whatever? But, like, that's a, the ultimate version of it. Who looks at a beaver and says, I bet you that I can milk that ass and make perfume. Uh, Yeah. No, that sounds right. Man. Uh, yeah. I, I'm going to milk funny that is, beaver's uh, ass. <laughs> that's a phrase you don't look, want to hear on a first date. Look at that date. beaver pucker. I want to get up there, get my finger in it, and just squeeze, and then get it all over my hands, and then put it in my cake. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I want to be rich, castorium rich. I want to be. I want to the dive castorium into a pool King like Scrooge of McDuck of castorium. All right, for our ten point round, Schwiebenbahn having its origins in Germany. Schwiebenbahns are a highly unique and sought by tour and sought by tourists worldwide. There are four spots in Germany which you can get the best experience with Schwiebenbahns, each with their own unique variation. Uh, spell it. S C H W E B E B A H N. Schwiebenbahn. Yeah, dude, that's got to be a, a conveyance of some sort because the autobahn B A H N is like a uh, killer road, and uh, and this has to be something else road. So it's got to be like I think it's like a train or a monorail. I think it's a monorail. I think it's a monorail. Okay, Justin. Mm. This is for 10 Germans, points. Germans, huh? Germans. Mein Leben. The, the Jews Germans. talking about the Germans. Sorry, hold on. Germans don't like small talk. Do you know that? No, I didn't no. know. It. Yeah, they don't fucking they don't like it, dude. Don't don't try to don't try to do it with them. <laughs> don't, don't try. That's how World War One started. You thought it was the black hand, it wasn't. It was them trying to start small talk. British tried to smart, start some small talk, <laughs> fucked up, blew up in their face, gave them, a, gave them the first great war. <laughs> we had to make a podcast about it to knock it off. Try to load up mine Leben. <laughs> Just fucking, I'm telling you, man, don't. Schwiebenbahn? Schwiebenbahn. That's a great place to, that's next to the Orange Julius, the Schwiebenbahn. You know, cinnamon, cinnamon sweet. Mm -hmm. Get a little ooey gooey Schwiebenbahn. Maybe a little castorium. You know, high in the calories. I'd, next I'd like to the extra castorium dots. on my, my Schwiebenbahn. So, yeah, ca extra castorium, please. And you're like, hey, me and 12 friends are going to go in a Ford in a Ford pickup with six benches put in. <laughs> and we ain't getting up. So you better have like Sonic style roller skate delivery. Yeah. They better be on the funds. I'll tell you that much. Exactly. Bring us fucking 20 Schweben bonds. Too sweet. <laughs> I'm rolling up in one pickup truck like a fucking church. Just 12 pews. <laughs> One pickup truck with like a, like a, it's a hayride, only they're pews. <laughs> you got, you got an entire youth group <laughs> sitting there with like, so they're like scotch taped to the bed of the trailer. Holy shit, I'm it's an evolution of Mormons. With one pickup truck and it looks like an entire Splash Mountain cart. <laughs> like just one Long row after room. another. <laughs> uh, hmm. I think it's a food, and here's why. Okay. Brian picked the other one, and I want to win. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I it's mean, the only way to win. I mean, ah, uh, bring it back game theory and remote <laughs> and remote gameplay. I love it. Oh, we're so back, baby. We're so back. <laughs> I mean, hey, you could try and get a description and match Brian, and you would surpass him in points. It is double this round. No. Okay. Don't. <laughs> hey, hey, Schweben Bonnet, buddy. Schweben Bonnet. Yeah, dude. All right. Gentlemen, Schwiebenbahn 
is a German term for suspension railway, bringing Brian up. Damn, Damn. he nailed it. To 25 Damn. points Damn. for not only getting it right, but defining it. Oh, Brian, Damn. Obama is yours. Oh. Hey. Thank you. Oh, man. Dude, uh... That is that is that is white Obama. <laughs> whoa, Obama. Whoa, Obama. Bam, a lamb. Whoa, whoa, Obama. Looks more like George W. Bush. I think they just had one. They had one thing, dude. They weren't here for accuracy. They were here to capitalize on the moment, hope and change, but not <laughs> in the societal way. They wanted those coins, baby, making money, trying to trying to cash in. 2012 rolled around and they got they said we got eight years to really rack up the dough let's get all this obama shit out the door baby these people can't stop buying it, it, it obama it, it, fever it, it, has gripped america it, oh. it, it, it was the tickle me elmo for keith olbermann obsessives <laughs> how dare you sir how dare sir, you sir why don't you buy my obama <laughs> figurine sir if you don't buy it you are a disgusting not henry kissinger in 67 would say that you were not as bad as you could be right now sir <laughs> uh nathan if people have an idea for a game where they want to connect with you where's the best place to do so Hit up bit.ly slash NA Discord. You can find me as tech in the Discord. That's me. Right on. Thank you very much, Nathan. Thank you, thank you. Oh, man. Oh, dude. Feels good. Feels good. Uh, it does it's, feel good. It's really wild to have remote technology be this good where we could just talk to each other. Yeah. The, right? duck, the duck is dead. Fuck a duck. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, uh, I know that you only get 90 minute windows and we're already oh, no. at uh, 70 minutes. We, we should probably yeah. start winding it up. Gonna have to start winding it up. Well, Brian, let's do our traditional remote sign off where we each say a word to recap the episode. Yeah. You go first. Well, uh, remember that time that we no, you say one word and then i say a word and oh we yeah, yeah, yeah back okay and all right forth. that's the Rip. normal thing that we do <clears throat> yep we always do it and we're gonna do it for you right people have been clamoring for it in the chat they're saying do the word thing over and over and over again the chat is just saying over and over again <laughs> do the word thing over they just can't stop writing it in the chat <laughs> do the word thing there we go see <laughs> Uh, remember when we took that trip to a a, 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 a castorium factory and licked a beaver <laughs> uh, and <laughs> exalted in the ecstasy of youth <laughs> exclamation point <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, it's been a great night. A great night. Oh, my God. Oh, bright days ahead of us, my friend. Oh, see you, friends. We'll see you next Tuesday. Uh, it's been a great night. Shine on you, crazy diamond. Like a beaver's asshole. There's money. There's money in there. Castorium for the win. You know, like a girl that's a hero. Come on. Oh, it's been a great night, a great night, and I don't want to wait another week for another motherfucking great night. Just to my friend, the pain never ends the moment you walk away. Slamming my fingers in a door repeatedly feels just the same. Oh.